All right, as thousands of weak world brainwashed idiots prepare to march in the streets of New Zealand today for against or strike, even though they don't have jobs for climate change, um, some serious questions are being raised about the information we are getting about weather in New Zealand and whether or not, excuse the pun, Niwa is telling us all it can about historical extreme weather events. For much of the latest hysteria around climate change has been driven by Gabriel and the flood before that and the impression being created by a lazy and biased mainstream media that somehow, suddenly, our weather has got a whole lot worse because of man-made climate change. Um, Ian Wishart, we had him on the programme yesterday, long-time investigative journalist, Ian went and did some research um, and Ian looked at barometric low pressure and said, really, are these the most extreme? And he found a whole lot of storms that are not in the official NIWA database of extreme weather in New Zealand. And he was generous. He said, well, either maybe they've missed this stuff that I could find on the interweb or they're suppressing this stuff to support a narrative around climate change. I think it's a really interesting issue, and it is pretty cut and dried here. These weather events happen, there are records of it, but they're not in the official database. Look, and our next guest is someone who, prior to Gabriel in, in particular, was the guy who convinced me just with his science that that was going to be an extreme weather event because he looked at the barometric pressure, and when Philip Duncan from Weatherwatch says there's trouble on the way, you know what, I, ta I, I, I take notice. I wondered what Philip would make of Ian Wishart's research and this apparent huge gaping hole in the scientific records of NIWA. Philip joins us now. G'day, mate. How are you? Good morning. I'm very good. Thanks for having me. Look, um, Philip, uh, I still remember back when you said what the barometric pressure was going to be and how low it was by historical standards. Uh, that made me take things um, seriously and I think you, you were damn right. First, I want to ask, have you read this Climate of Fear report? That's the headline that Ian Wishart from Investigate magazine put on it. We've sent it to you. Have you had a look at what he's done? I have. Yeah, I have, and it doesn't surprise me. It's, um, it's Well, well first, can I ask you, Philip, is it, is it worthwhile research? Is he gilding the lily, or do you think his methodology of looking for extreme weather events in New Zealand's past is pretty good? No, I thought it was good, actually. I, was, I didn't know what to expect. Um, I don't get too much into the climate change debate because it's um, outside of the weather forecasting job I do and yeah. it's confusing enough for people to get into the politics of it. But the, the, the details he went into, um, it, it highlights a major problem that we've been talking about in New Zealand for well over 10 years, that we don't have open data. And it means that government agencies can weaponise that information um, and, and they have done it in work because they've turned very commercial. All right, so when you say weaponised in terms of weather data or in this... Well, first of all, l l let's just go back to basics. Is the stuff about extreme weather events that Ian Wishart found, you're saying it's credible, a credible method of research... Are you surprised that NIWA doesn't have it in the database that it makes available to journalists and other organisations? Not at all. NIWA's been um, commercialising and weaponising their data for over a decade. By that I mean they're taking tax-funded data and they're selling it commercially or they're picking bits and pieces of it and putting it out as news stories. But very hard to actually get into that area to verify a lot of what they're saying. And we're the only country in the entire modern Western world, we stand out like a banana republic with no open data. To get it, you have to sign up to NIWA's uh, special website. You've got to sign confidentiality agreements, which is unheard of. Um, and it's just to get data that is basically a snapshot of what Mother Nature just did. And we funded that through the taxpayer system. It should all be there. Every single air pressure reading from every single site but NIWA has decided to put a paywall in front of that, even though for years before, people volunteered to give that data to NIWA and others, uh, it was all funded by the government. So it's bizarre and um, very frustrating that we're in this situation in 2023 where we just have to trust a commercial government agency rather than see it for ourselves. All right, Philip. The other thing I get, and I know you're reluctant to get into the politics of it, 
But the incomplete data, and can we agree that NIWA is providing, even if you get behind the paywall, incomplete data on severe weather events in New Zealand's history? Yes, because they've commercialised it. They, they, they don't want to have free access to it for companies like WeatherWatch or anybody else because that takes them away from being the most important people to own that information. It's exactly the same as when Telecom thought they owned the copper wire network and said, this is ours, we don't, you know, no, we're not going to let other phone companies use it. And he was doing the exact same thing, saying this is our okay. property, it's ours, and so you okay. can't use it. So they don't allow people to freely use okay. it. I want to move on a, a step from that, Philip. Because we've got incomplete data, because we are being told that Gabriel is like unprecedented, and because Niwa hasn't done or published the sort of research that Ian Wishart has, it has created a belief that we are in a climate crisis because we cannot see the full picture because Niwa, who should be acting in our interest to give us the full picture, are refusing to give it to us. Would you agree with that proposition? That much I of would, and I'd also say that uh, there was a time when NIWA used to say you cannot use a single storm event to prove climate change, and that seems to have gone out the window now. Um, we're all, we've always had storms. We're always going to have floods. We're always going to have um, earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and tsunami. We live in a country that is perpetually changing. It's, it's a, it is really a young country but, uh, when you look at other places around the world. So having major weather events, that's just part of life here. Now, if we had lots of data, it would be very easy for university students and people to be able to match, uh, map what is going on with our climate here, whether, uh, whether or not we are getting more storms, whether or not we are seeing more floods. That information is very, very, very hard to confirm in New Zealand. We basically have to wait for a government agency that is highly commercial. I have to keep mentioning that. Yeah. It ruins their science. Um, that they are the ones that drip feed it to the media and sort of exciting tweets rather than it being just data that anyone can mm. hear of you. Philip, I'm wondering if as well as being highly commercial, they are highly politicised. Oh, massively. And in fact, I've said for a long time, government has actually totally lost control of NIWA. Uh, the last minister, Megan Wood, said she can't do anything about their commercial operations and yet the government owns them. So the government has made it very clear. NIWA can do whatever they want. They can commercialise data. They can say what they want to the media. And they can compete against Met Service, which is even more bizarre. So it's, it's a strange setup, And I think the, the lack of control here is being confirmed mm. more and more. Yeah. Philip, people, uh, thousands of misguided people are going to march or strike for climate change today. I don't know what they think to achieve. Many of them will be doing it or some of them at least will be doing it, because in the last few weeks our media, acting on information from NIWA, have been telling us that Gabriel was uh, the result of climate change and creating this narrative that we've never had such rough weather in New Zealand before so frequently. Is that yeah. a lie? It is. I don't know if it's a lie, but it's certainly not. I don't think it's accurate um, because the, we've, we've always had storms. Now, I don't want to say that, that that dismisses climate change. Climate change is usually measured over decades and you start to notice, oh, this region's getting fewer rain events or this one's getting much more of them or whatever. But cyclones, I mean, the, the evidence is saying that we're probably going to see fewer tropical cyclones, but they will be worse when we get them. Um, we've only had, you know, a, a, we've only had a couple in the last few years. So it's very hard to measure cyclones as being connected to climate change. Um, and, and I think you'll find meteorologists and scientists, a lot of them around the world, would say that. A single storm is very hard to say, well, that was climate change. So you've got to see lots of them in a row and build up a picture. That's what I was taught at school, and that's what I've been taught ever since. And it seems to be going out the window a lot more these days. And the media, I mean, the media were the ones that spent all last weekend headlighting Cyclone Judy because government forecasters at NIWA said it was coming here. And now it's not. And now they're not talking about it. So it's, it's just, we're in a weird place at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you think NIWA has to explain why it hasn't done the basic research on extreme weather and included in his database that Ian Wishart has in his Climate Affair report? I think NIWA needs to stop being the headline and they need to allow everybody with a brain to access historical data that is tax-funded and owned by the public. Once that data is freely available, 
the debate about climate change is a very different one because people can see it. They can see whatever is happening. Whereas at the moment, we're trusting a commercial agency that's trying to beat net service for having clickbait news stories. So it's, it's very hard to trust what's happening now with NIWA versus what NIWA was like, say, 10 years ago when they weren't so commercial. Yeah. Hey, Philip, thank you so much. My uh, pleasure. I, I just found the information you've given us fascinating. But while, while I've got you here... <laughs> And I hate to put, you, put your weather hat on. Look, uh, um, summer ended yesterday. We are now in autumn by season. That was the crappest summer I've ever had. Yeah, you need to live in the South Island. The, the, the farmers in Gore are telling me it's the best summer they've ever had. So it depends on where you live. <laughs> um, but the North Island, you're right, it's been really rough. And uh, we, you know, so we have these um, sort of tropical monsoon areas that, that form out from the north of Australia and they go over Fiji and usually out over the Cook Islands. But this summer, it was out over New Zealand. And so, you know, we got that monsoon rain one low after the other. The good news is, right, now that summer's kind of ended, we're actually in quite a good spell of weather for the next 10 days or so. So it's, uh, it's kind of typical, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Um, would you recommend people do read Ian's report, Climate Affair? Oh, absolutely. But, I, but see, I come from a, from a different point of view. I'm not sort of going after the climate change angle so much. I'm more frustrated that we live in yeah. a country that doesn't have open data, like yeah. Banana Republic kind of stuff. Yeah, Philip, thank you so much for your time this morning. Always a pleasure, my friend. Take it easy. Thank you, Sean. Much Cheers. appreciated. That is Philip Duncan from Weatherwatch New Zealand. Wow, I think, Ian, another angle to a story. Uh, Niwa, we try to get hold of Niwa. They just haven't got back to us. They couldn't be asked. Uh, and we'll try and get hold of it. Uh, uh, Aisha Verrill, she who fired Rob Campbell, see if she will take a stand on Niwa. So a whole lot of mainstream media and misguided people are saying that Gabriel was all about climate change. The data would suggest otherwise. And Niwa, it's our information. You're a public body, for goodness sake. For goodness sake. Um, Sean, uh, weather information behind a paywall with a confidentiality agreement, unbelievable. Great interview. Sean, does Niwa employ a single New Zealander? They're all Yanks. Try employing some New Zealanders. Niwa, says Jason. Um, Sean, uh, is he and her mum marching today in the climate protest or are they overseas again, says <laughs> you. Oh, I'll get, I'll get pinged for being mean to someone. Sean, Black Ball makes the best salami in the country. Dave, I would agree with that. Um, Sean, would you bring the library story to the attention of Mayor Wayne Brown? Yeah, we're talking to Wayne now, trying to tee up a time for him to talk to us. He's into it. And yes, I will bring up the um, drag queens uh, politicising kids with their fetish uh, in public libraries in Auckland. I will bring that up. And it's all just imported from the States. And it's not a community, the, the blokes who dress up as chicks. That's not a community. It's just blokes who dress up as chicks. Um, Sean... Michael needs to listen to that interview you just did. He seems to believe that storms are becoming more frequent and violent. Hopefully I'm not misquoting what Michael's views are. I'd be keen to hear Michael's views once he hears the interview. Thanks, Cam. Uh, yeah, Michael's not on today because he went down to Omaru and his car broke down and he couldn't get back to his studio. So we're just going to do a best of all of the platform this week from 10 to 1. I'm sorry about that. It was very late notice. He rang me last night. I couldn't get Tina in because she's got some stuff on and she's over the hill in Wairarapa. I do need to find... I need, do need to find another just fill-in voice. I was thinking about Ben, but he's a bit young yet. I'm not sure he's ready for a full three hours. And I'm flogging him to death trying to get interviews from people who don't want to talk to him or me.